So a few things before we begin. If you're uploading to YouTube or Vimeo, they all have their own specifications. I am here right now on YouTube where what you can see here is these recommended upload encoding settings just for uploading video in general. So what we have right now is 4K video. And if I head over, what I think is the most important section is bitrate. So let's just say that this video is a standard dynamic range. And we look over here at the type, we can see that the 4K type, they're recommending 35 to 45 megabits per second. The most important thing to know about this, and I always hear my fellow trainers voice in my head, Jeff Greenberg. These are the minimal settings that YouTube recommends. At the end of the day, I just don't want you to become frustrated with waiting for a long time for a video to first of all, render to your system and then for you to upload it to the system. So they're kind of creating a intermediate file for you. If I scrolled up, one of the most important things to look at under the video Kodak H.264 is you'll see that there's no bitrate limit required. You can take the file that you create and essentially at an extremely high megabits per second rate for your VR footage. And what we wanna keep in mind is that YouTube, as well as Vimeo, if you're uploading to Vimeo, they're gonna recompress your video. And you can see that you know the standard settings for 4K video here in general are 35 to 45 megabits per second. And then if we look at the compression guidelines for Vimeo, we can see there the 4K monoscopic 360, 4096, but you can see there that they're recommending anywhere up to 60 megabits per second, depending on how high your frame rate is. Keep this in mind that these are usually recommended minimal settings and whatever you render out from Adobe Media Coder is gonna be recompressed on either one of these places that you upload to. So with that in mind, I'm gonna minimize the screen we're gonna head over into Adobe Media Encoder and I'm just gonna maximize this now. And down here on the bottom left, you can see that I have a bunch of presets. Let's start with a preset. We're actually gonna just scroll down to the YouTube category, which I already have open. And we're gonna choose this YouTube 2160. It's, so it's meant for 4K. It's not the actual dimensions of our footage, but we're just gonna grab that and place it here on this project. We wanna go in here and alter and make some changes to the settings. So click on the preset, the YouTube 2160P 4K preset, and it's gonna open up our export settings dialog box. The first thing that you wanna do in here, first of all, is match the source settings. And I just wanna tell you a limitation with H.264. And that limitation is that you can't go above 4K, okay? So 4K is the maximum that you can export. If you have 8K material, you're gonna to need to use a different type of codec such as Apple ProRes in order to export up your material. That is if you're trying to keep the resolution. Once we have that match source, let's go down and let's start to play with the quality. Number one, at the expense of time, but getting a better file, we're gonna do a VBR two pass. So that's variable bit, a variable bit rate encoding. It's going to go through our video twice to ensure that we have the best quality of video possible. Next, we want to start to play around with these target bit rates. And as I showed you on YouTube, the minimum was 35 megabits per second to 45 megabits per second for 4K video, depending on the frame rate. But we can assume that the 30 frames per second frame rate would be the maximum. That's 45. But we're going to really up that number. We're going to take it and almost double it. I'm gonna just take this and actually make it 80 megabits, the target bit rate, but make the maximum bit rate to be 90. Now you can up this even more. I would suggest experimenting a little bit as the first time, just so that you get this right to know that you're gonna get a high quality video at the end on YouTube. And now last but not least, inside the video tab, we also want to make sure that the VR video, video is VR, checkbox is enabled. If this isn't enabled, we're not gonna be able to see this video as a 360 video on an appropriate internet browser. So you need to check this to apply the appropriate metadata so that YouTube sees this as a VR video. Now in the next movie, we're gonna make some changes to the publishing settings and I'll see you there shortly.